I'm going to talk about adjustable shelves. You know, it doesn't make any difference whether you're making a bookcase, a country hutch, or a china cabinet. They're all going to have shelves, and for the uh, most efficient use of the space, those shelves really need to be adjustable. Probably the simplest method is to use metal shelf standard strips. They're punched with a row of slots that accept a metal shelf clip. They're really easy to install. All you have to do is plow 5 8 inch grooves, 3 16 of an inch deep in the sides of your case. Drop them into place. And fasten them with screws or nails. These are great for utility shelves because the half inch increment lets you place your shelves very efficiently. And they're even acceptable in a bookcase where your books are going to cover up most of the hardware. But if your case is mainly used for display, like this one, this might not look so good. So here, we're going to drill a row of evenly spaced holes and use shelf rests. So how do we drill a row of evenly spaced holes a uniform distance from the edge of the workpiece. Probably the simplest method is to use a strip of perforated hardboard. We've got quarter inch holes, one inch on center. Place it on our workpiece. Now I've marked the top of the guide because you always want to index your guide from either the top or the bottom. I've chosen the top so that as you do all case sides, you don't risk misaligning the holes. Then clamp it in place. Now you probably don't want holes running all the way to the top of your side. They're not very useful up there. So to avoid making a mistake and drilling the holes where you don't want them, just take a piece of masking tape, cover up the unwanted holes. And then if you don't want your holes every inch, you could also go ahead and cover up the holes that you don't want. Now we're ready to drill. I'm using a quarter inch pilot point bit. You can also use a brad point bit. And I put a masking tape depth stop flag on here that is 3 eighths of an inch, which is the typical depth that you'll be drilling for a shelf pin, plus the quarter inch depth of my guide. Here we go. Now when you've got the entire line of first line of holes drilled, unclamp your strip. To keep the spacing from the edge even, flip it over, align top and side. If you're not confident about your ability to keep your drill perpendicular as you're drilling the holes, you can always go and do this on your drill press. The disadvantage of using perforated hardboard is that every time I drill, I wear out these holes a little bit. Sooner or later, they're so sloppy that I'll have to throw this away and make myself another strip. There's a couple of ways I can get around that, and I'll show those to you. This is a quarter inch self-centering bit. It's got a step nose on it that fits into a 3 8 inch hole. This bit is pretty much dedicated to drilling shelf pin holes, and you can buy drilling guides to go with it. But I've made my own out of hardboard. 3 8 inch holes, evenly spaced, once again, inch and a quarter from the edge. And I use it in exactly the same manner that I use the strip of perforated hardboard. Index from the top, clamp it in place, and drill. Now I haven't drilled the holes all the way to the end of my drilling guide because I don't need holes up here. If you're apprehensive about your ability to drill perpendicular holes, and you don't have a drill press, but you do have a plunge router, here's what you can do. Outfit your plunge router with a quarter inch bit and a 3 8 inch outside diameter guide bushing. Now I've set the plunge depth to the 3 8 inch depth of the hole I want plus the quarter inch thickness of my guide. Now, I made myself a drilling guide out of quarter inch hardboard. 
and I've drilled a row of evenly spaced holes that, for the guide bushing. Now because the guide bushing is 3 8 inch outside diameter, I've drilled these holes a 64th of an inch oversized, so I get a nice easy slip fit with the uh, guide bushing. Notice also that I've drawn my center lines all the way across my guide. That's so when I set my router down over this, I can see where my centers are and it'll help me line up my router. Clamp our drilling guide in place. Fit the guide bushing, the holes in the jig, and plunge away. And there you have it. Drill press accuracy on the top of your workbench. If you want the time savings of a manufactured drilling guide at the cost of one that you can make in your own shop, here's something that I found at my local hardware store. It's a piece of perforated steel strap, 5 16 inch holes every 3 quarter inch on center. I got this 72 inch piece because I was making some full length bookcases, but you can buy shorter lengths. Then, in a mail order catalog, I found these self-centering bits, quarter inch and five millimeter. So I've got the two common sizes of shelf pins covered. Both of these for about the cost of this one dedicated bit. Plus, I can use these for other things. The tapered ends of the guides center themselves nicely in the 5 16 inch holes. Now I just position the strap on my workpiece. This time, I'm going to use a combination square to line it up with the edge. And I'll cover any holes that I don't use with masking tape as I did before. I could go ahead, drill this with a hand drill, but I'm going to show you how to do this on the drill press. I've got a couple of pieces of 2x4s under the workpiece so it makes room for the clamps. And then I've positioned the fence to center the bit on my row of holes. Now I can just drop the tapered end of the self-centering bit right into the hole. The bit never touches the guide, so it doesn't damage the guide, and consequently the bit isn't damaged either. Now it's just a case of switching on and drilling. Okay, there we have it. Shelf pin holes all drilled, fast, cheap, easy.